The Lord is good all the time. And all the time, the Lord is good. And I want to welcome you to this wonderful moment, this wonderful opportunity that the Lord has granted us this opportune moment so that we can go deeper into the oracles and the ordinances of Elohim. Yes, uh, the minister uh, standing before you, this is Prophet Eliud Zavila. And uh, uh, tonight we are launching deeper into the deep. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit such as the deep things of God. There are people who can assess things from God and there are people that can assess the deep things of God. Therefore tonight, as we are launching deeper, because Jesus says launch into the deep. You see, uh, when you go to the ocean, when, when you go to the beach, what you get to understand, what, what you find out is that the people that are swimming in the shallow waters are the people that make the most noise. And the people that are swimming in the deep. You see, when you are swimming in the deep, you are concentrating. You are focused on the tides. You are focused on the waves. You are focused on the place and the timings. Because in the deep, you have to concentrate. Therefore, tonight, I am talking to people who are want to go deeper, to have an understanding of divine matters. Because God made man in his own image after his own likeness. God created man to operate as a God. Because when God uh, came down in the cool of the day to speak to Adam, I want you to understand that whatever God spoke to Adam, not everything was contained or written in the Bible uh, concerning the conversation or concerning the dialogue between God and Adam. And every time we see that Adam did not pray, Adam was not on his knees seeking the face of the Lord. What happened is that God, there was a mechanism, there was a technology that was applied in Eden such that God would come down to seek Adam. God was interested in the affairs of man. And therefore, uh, tonight, as we go deeper into the things of God, we want to understand the four horns and the four carpenters. The four horns and the four carpenters. The Bible says in the book of Zechariah, chapter 1, from verse 18. Kindly break your Bible to the book of Zechariah, chapter 1, from verse 18. The Bible says, Then lift I up my eyes, and saw, and behold, there were four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah. Israel and Jerusalem, and the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then said I, What uh, come these to do? And he spoke, saying, uh, These are, are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man, no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fray them, these are come to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lift up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. I'm talking of territorial balance. I'm talking of territorial anointing. I'm talking of jurisdictions. I'm talking of kingdoms. I'm talking of powers. I'm talking of authorities. I'm talking of dimensions. I'm talking of men who have encountered the divine. And we, when we go deeper, we get to understand that uh, in this concept or in this uh, 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 verse, we get to understand that there were four hands. And, and, and Zechariah, we are told that, and I say to the angel that talked with me, there was a communication, there was a dialogue, there was an interaction between an angel, a being of the spirit and a human being. And the angel was communicating to the man. And the man was asking questions and the angel was answering. The angel was, was revealing things that were hidden in the spirit. There were matters that pertained revelation that needed an inner dimension of understanding. And the angel began to speak to the prophet. And the angel is showing the prophet, revealing mysteries unto the prophet. What is written is that he asked, what are these? And behold, there were four horns. And I said unto the angel, this is a human being interacting with a celestial being. The, the man said, and I said to the angel uh, that talked with me, what be this? 
These are matters that are happening in the realms of the spirit. These are locations and platforms and places that this man was standing in a particular dimension and he was downloading strange information from the realms of the spirit. The prophet was assessing a realm. He was assessing divine wisdom and the angel was downloading material unto the prophet. And, and, and we see according to the dialogue and according to the communications of the fellowship between man and the angel, the angel is answering questions. The angel is, is giving solutions to this man and is trying to, 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 to make this man understand what exactly is happening. What be this? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah. He calls them the horns. You see, the angel says these are the horns. He's not speaking of people. He's not speaking of human beings. He's not speaking of wicked spirits. No, he actually names them horns. These are the horns, the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. We are talking of horns that have scattered you. These are horns that have scattered Judah. That with these horns, Judah has scattered. Ephraim has gone down. Israel is depreciating because there is a system, a wicked technology that has been implored upon the land. And these are horns. And the work of the horns, it is to scatter. It is to scatter. To scatter Judah. It is to scatter Israel. It is to scatter Jerusalem. Why Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem? Because Judah, they were according to the promises of God and to Judah, that which was spoken in the book of Genesis chapter uh, the Genesis chapter 49, we see that there are blessings that have been spoken. There are blessings that have been decreed. That the man Jacob is decreeing blessings. He calls his children and then Israel begins to decree things. The inner man, the spirit man, begins to legislate affairs in the lives of the children of Jacob. The Bible says there are horns that have scattered Judah, the tribe of Judah, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Judah was a tribe that was perceived or believed to, uh, to, to bring forth kings because kings shall come from Judah. Judah is like a lion's well. Judah was confirmed to be a lion. And when it comes to warfare, when it came to battle, we see that who shall go uh, uh, against uh, our enemies and God will say that, uh, let Judah go first. Let Judah go first. Listen to me very carefully. That the horns would scatter Judah. The horns scattered Jerusalem. The horns scattered Israel. That these horns are concerned for are concerned uh, on the downfall of nations. The downfall of nations. The downfall of a, 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 a very a, 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 a men of stature that have gone down, that have depreciated because of a certain force that was implored upon their lives, that was uh, introduced in their family. And there's something that is happening in that family. The family is going down. People are dying. People are looking for jobs. And it's like, it's, it's the only family that people are denied jobs. And you don't understand what has happened. Why my family is this way? What has happened to our children? That uh, there has to be one child that is born out of your household and among your brothers and your sisters, you get to find that there has to be one child that is vagabond or mad. It is because it is a demonic system. It is a, you see, the devil is not just interested in men. The devil is interested in nations. The devil is interested in jurisdictions, in platforms. He's interested in kingdoms. He's interested in regions. The devil is not interested in how much money you have. He's interested in the affairs of man. When he connects with God, man becomes an enemy and to the and to the devil and the devil would uh, attack man because of his relationship with his maker you see the devil is interested in bringing man down and god is interested in blessing man and god is revealing unto his people that the cause of these calamities and problems that have been happening into your family that has been happening in your life has been happening in your business has been happening in your children and in your bloodline that the problem is the four horns 
horns, that there are horns, and these horns are dangerously committed to see that you struggle, that you are in depression, that you are in frustration, that you go down. These are the horns that scatter Judah. These are the horns that scatter Judah. They scatter Jerusalem. They scatter Israel, my God. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Now, this is not about the angel again. Now, it is God now showing the prophet. There are four carpenters, carpenters, people who are, are work on wood. These are carpenters. Then said I, what come this to do? So there were four horns, and then the four carpenters would come. They, they appear in that very platform, in that very scenario. They appear in that very place. And the man continues to ask and he spoke, what have these come to do? And he spoke saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah so that no man did lift up his head. No man, no man. Any pastor that will try to go to the university or work hard so that you can achieve something tangible, something would come to ensure that you are not promoted, to ensure that you go down, to ensure that you do not prosper because it's a demonic techno technology. Now listen to me very carefully. The man is interested in revelation. The man is interested in what he is told. And, and, and God continues to say, these are the ones that have scattered Judah. They have scattered Judah. And what they have done specifically is that no man did lift up his head. We are battling against powers. We are battling against systems. There are systems that are, uh, that are, uh, 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 that affect regions. There are places that when you go there, that uh, the ladies in that place, there are early marriages. There are places that when you go to certain places, people die as a, as a certain age. They said in this region, no one has ever crossed the age of 45. Why? Because there is a system that has already been installed in that family, in that region, in that bloodline. And there are people that are affected by certain diseases in the bloodline. I'm talking of diabetes. I'm talking of cancer. I'm talking of HIV. I'm talking of a, a sickle cell anemia. I'm talking of diseases that are planted in the body. Diseases that have refused to let you go. Diseases that have lived with you for such a very long time and you don't understand. No medication has ever conquered that disease. Yes, they have taken you to India, they have taken you to Germany, they have taken you to Australia, they have taken you to all the best doctors you have spent all your fortune just because you are looking for solution. But the medications and whatever they have prescribed for you, it has not worked. I want to tell you there's a God in heaven, a God who is able to deliver. The Bible says that as God continues to reveal the mysteries unto this man, he says these hands have scattered Judah so that no man Man did lift up his head, but these are come to fray them to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lift up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. People don't just come and, and rise up. People don't just rise up. No. There are people who understand the mysteries of spiritual legislations. There are people who understand that you don't just you don't just manifest, you don't just prosper. No, there has to be something. There has to be a technology or a mechanism that can catapult your business, that can catapult your life from one dimension to another, from one glory to another. That's why people, the Bible says, esteem the prophets of God and you shall be established. Why? Because they carry kids. They carry, uh, they carry keys. They carry solutions to people's destinies. And that's why tonight I am in this platform because of a solution that has been brought from heaven for your sake. I am on this platform because there are things that must be directed unto you. There are blessings that must flow into that bloodline. There is a power and a force that comes from heaven that comes to scatter the four homes, that comes to scatter the altars, the powers, whatever mechanism that has been derived from the pit of hell that has been installed in that family and it has become close to impossible for the women in that family to get married i want to tell you one thing there is a god in heaven and i'm bringing down that power and i scatter that whatever altar that is speaking against that marriage speaking against the people in the family they go down by fire they go down by fire and they scatter their power and they scatter the four horns the four horns in your business the four 
horns in your family, the four horns that are standing in your bloodline. There are people that die prematurely in your life. There are people that die prematurely in their family. It's because there is a program. A program has been employed. It has been installed. Things that are being, uh, 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 they, they employ them and deploy them from the realms of the spirit. They have all kinds of mechanisms and, and plots and plans. How to bring down human beings. And these are the people that I want to talk about tonight. Because tonight is a night of restoration. It is a night of power. It is a night of the prophetic. It's, the, it's a night of healing. There are people that shall receive their blessing tonight in Jesus' mighty name. The book of Esther. Break your Bible to the book of Esther chapter 8 from verse 1 to 5. The Bible says, On that day did the king Ahasuerus give the house of Naaman of Haman, the Jews' enemy, and to Esther the queen. The Bible says, And Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told uh, what he was unto her. And the king took off his ring, from verse 15, 7, uh, 13, 15, and 17 says, And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai, and Esther set Mordecai, or Mordecai over the house of Emmer. And Esther spake yet again before the king, and fell down at his feet, and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman the Agagite, and his device that he has he had devised against the Jews. So Haman had a device. Devices. People who have devices are people who are rooted in Satan. Satanism, this occultism, wickedness. The Bible says, Then the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king and said, If it please the king, and if I have found favor in his, in his sight, and the thing seemed right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written, Listen to me very carefully. Let it be written to reverse, to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of the Hamedata, the Hamedata, uh, the Hamedata, the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, which are in all the king's provinces. There were letters, letters. There were things that were written down. There are things. There are oracles. There are there are declarations. Wicked decrees. I'm talking of wicked decrees. Wicked decrees. Weber has written down something on paper and buried it in the graveyard. And that paper has your name on it. I command them to die tonight. They will not see sunshine tomorrow in the name of Jesus. I command them to die. I command them to scatter. Whoever has written your name on a piece of paper and sent it to a witch doctor or a sangoma or sent it to occultic men so that they can practice their mischief against your family or against your life. I want to tell you, category as a prophet, I decree thunder and fire, they will fall down and die. They will fall down and die. Touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. Every attack against your life that has been written down, they are writings, wicked writings. People who write down decrees, people who sit down together and then they plot. They plot the downfall of families. They plot the downfall of nations. They plot the downfall of kings. Kings have gone down because the council of Ahithophel had assembled together against David so that to bring down David. And Ahithophel did not see the sun. He died. Why? Because he messed up with the anointing. I want to tell you that there is anointing that comes from God. There is a power that can outmatch the powers of the Sangomas, the powers of the witch doctors, the powers and the authors and every mechanism and strategies of darkness that have been sent against you, they will backfire. I reverse it. I command it to be reversed. I command whatever they have said against your children, it shall be reversed back to the sender. Back to the sender. It shall go back. It shall devour them. It shall feed on them. It shall scatter them in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, my God, my God, I, I can feel the anointing. I can feel the anointing of God here. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 from verse 13, the Bible says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole duty of man. 
Fear God and keep his commandments. The duty of man, the duty of man is to fear God and to keep his commandments. That is why David loved to be in the house of God. He says he looks at the house of God. He is interested in the presence of God. I want to tell you that what made Israel to be unique and peculiar, it is the presence of the Ark of the Covenant. It is the presence of God in that vicinity that made Balak to shake, that made Balak. The bones were almost coming out of his body because of fear. He looked at the Israelites and he knew that axes, swords, and all manner of armory and weapons cannot outmatch or bring down or conquer the Israelites. Because the Israelites, they understood the technology of warfare. They understood that battles are not fought with swords. Battles are not fought with guns. They need not SU, they need not any weapon to fight them. They have a technology of warfare known as Elohim Adonai, Jehovah Shebaot, the God of the heavenly armies, and that many times God would come down and strike down thousands and thousands. Woo! Zanta Bagadosha, Zampa Kadabosha, Leria Mashakatapa, Leko Posakatapa. In the name of Jesus, the book of Psalms, chapter 140, from verse 4. The book of Psalms. The Bible says, Keep me, O Lord. This is a prayer of David. He says, Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. They are wicked men. Keep me from their hands. Preserve me from the violent man who has purpose to overthrow my goings. Ah! Psalms chapter 140 from verse 11 says, uh, uh, It says, Let not an evil speaker uh, be established in the earth. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. It shall hunt them. It shall hunt them. Something will just happen. And that witch will die. And that violent man will die. And the horns will scatter. The horns. Horns are systems. I'm talking of the systems. Media systems. The media fraternity. That have expressed their wickedness through the media. And they are driving young men into prostitution. They are driving the young generation into uh, into wickedness, into secular secularism, into 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 a kind of a system that they have got no fear of the Lord. And you see, this generation is not interested in God because it's a system that is working in the realms of the spirit. It is a power. It is an organization that has that is focused on the downfall. It is focused on the separation of man uh, from his God. And therefore tonight, I decree as a prophet, I decree in the realms of the spirit, I send a decree by thunder and by fire. Whatever power that dares you henceforth dies. Oh my God. Whatever power of whatever dimension, of whatever sort, of whatever magnitude that dares you scatters and dies. It scatters and dies. It is a time of war. Jeremiah 46 from verse 3. Order you the buckler and shield and draw near to battle. It is time to battle. It is time to bring down these occultic realms. It is time to bring down these occultic systems. It is time to take over the land. You see, Abraham's attack on the five kings was a mop-up operation. We cannot be said to have, to have won the battle until we take possession of the land possession of the land. You see, when the Israelites entered Canaan, the Jebusites were there, the Perizzites were there, the Canaanites were there. They lived in that land. But then God, God Almighty, he spoke to Abraham and he told Abraham, and to your offspring I will give this land. And Abraham built there an altar unto the Lord. An altar. An altar It's a place, a significant place where God meets with man, where terrestrial meets with the celestial, where man meets with spirit beings. It is a place where you can download spiritual material. It is a place of encounter. It is a place of possession. So when Abraham built 
built an altar unto the Lord, Abraham understood that this I have possessed. I have possessed. And that's why we need to be sensitive in the spirit. There are people that have been delayed in life. There are people who have, have wrestled, they have battled situations and circumstances and it seems impossible for it to let you go. I want to tell you it's a night of the miraculous. It's a night of the prophetic. And as a prophet, I decree by power. I decree by thunder. That power and that sickness and that disease are that curse that was spoken upon you, that wickedness that was implored upon your family, it will scatter tonight. It dies tonight. God is sending an angel. I'm talking of angel. I'm talking of angel. If the prophet was communicating to angels, tonight I am sending angels your way. Angels, financial breakthrough. Angels of healing. Angels of good news. Angels of promotion. Angels of elevation. Angels that we come to catapult you. That which has taken people 20 years to accomplish. It will take you less than a month to achieve. Because you are not going according to human understanding. There are three kinds of wisdom. There is the wisdom of man. There is divine wisdom. And there is diabolical wisdom. The wisdom of man is the wisdom, is the knowledge and the understanding that which a, 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 a child or a man is born with. The understanding and the knowledge that you attain in life is human wisdom. And we are talking of diabolical wisdom. We're talking diabolical wisdom. Diabolical wisdom is wickedness. This is witchcraft. Enchantment. What is enchantment? Enchantment is monotonous repetition of something. Somebody's enchanting. Somebody's chanting. To chant, it is to repeat something. Somebody's mentioning your name every time. Mentioning your name. Let us see how far you will go. They are mentioning your name. They keep your name in their mouth. Bad mouthed prophets. Wicked people that are interested in your downfall. They begin to chant things. And who are diviners? Divine, the work of diviners, it is to locate you. They locate you in the realms of the spirit. These are all sources and mechanisms and strategies and weapons of darkness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whoever is enchanting your name, whoever is enchanting your downfall, we fought tonight. Whoever is enchanting your children, calling out their names to failure, they will go down and die tonight. And I speak to the land as a prophet. Hear thee the word of the Lord. I'm speaking to the mountains of your family. I'm speaking to the mountains of your family. The mountains of your family. And I command every altar and every strategy of darkness that has been employed and deployed against you so that you go down. I command that power to scatter. Together with the priests of Baal, they will scatter and they will die. Tonight is a night of judgment. Whatever that belongs to you will come to you. Whoever has taken that which is precious unto you, whoever has taken your money, whoever has taken your finances, whoever has taken your family, whoever has taken your children, whoever has taken your star, I'm speaking to somebody, whoever has taken your star, and you find it hard for you to prosper, you find it hard for you to be employed, you have a degree, you have a PhD, you have a master's in accounts, but something strange is happening to you. When other people are going to interview and they are being assessed, what happens? Is that they cannot see you? Is that they are you? You are you, they, they, they are blinded. They cannot notice you. They can, because a darkness is upon you. That's why they cannot notice you. Tonight, an angel is coming your way. Whatever darkness was placed over your head, so that blessings cannot locate you. That darkness scatter. Whatever prince, I'm talking of principalities. Because when Daniel prayed, there was a, a contention in the realms of the spirit, and there were principalities and powers. There were organize, organized spirits who were there focused to ensure that the prayers of Daniel were not answered until the angel was sent from heaven and to the life of uh, uh, Daniel and there was an intervention. Therefore tonight there are battles you cannot fight without divine intervention. There are battles you cannot fight without an angelic intervention. Who are angels? Angels are celestial Celestial beings. They are beings that stand and minister before the throne of Elolion. They are, they are spirits. They are a spirit. The angels are divine spirits. Angels are creatures found in their celestial dimensions that minister unto man. He has made him a little lower than the angels. 
There's something that is happening to somebody. There are people that are listening to me who will be receiving a, a, a replication of anointing. And there are people who will be receiving a, a, a my God, am I speaking to somebody? Something is happening to somebody tonight. That sickness and that cancer must die. I am sending angels your way. I am sending angels your way. I know you need that intervention. You need God to intervene. Somebody's crying in the ICU. Somebody's sick in the face of the Lord. Somebody does not know what will happen tomorrow. Your children have not taken food. They have not eaten. It's the third day now. And you don't know what is happening. You are asking God, when will God intervene? It is tonight. It is tonight. And I'm sending an angel your way. And I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit of God that this angel will locate you. You will be located to be relocated into your divine allocation. Tonight is a night of location. The angel of the Lord will locate you tonight. Something is going to be transferred in the realms of the spirit. And I transfer wealth in the realms of the spirit. Take it, take it, take it, take it. In the name of Jesus. I am transferring authority. There are people that are sitting in your seat. I unseat them. Whoever is sitting in your place, whoever is sitting in your place, I unseat them. By authority and by power and by the thunder and fire of the Holy Spirit, I command them to vacate the land. Witches, whoever is trying to bend the laws of God. The Bible says you flaunt the laws of God and they will flatten you. There are people that will be flattened tonight. The Bible says suffer not a witch to live. Suffer not. If it's demon possession, then that demon can be cast out. But if it's about witchcraft, you practice witchcraft. The constitution of God says, suffer not a witch to live. So any person that is in the brackets of witchcraft, I command you to die. I command you to die to night fire. I command you to die and scatter. I command you to go down and die. I command you to be depreciated and cease to exist in Jesus' mighty name. My God. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. You are watching me and you have not received Christ as your personal Savior. I want you to understand that salvation is of God. And salvation has come so that to connect you is a bridge to connect you unto your maker. Because we have been fashioned to operate as God. And God bless them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion. That's, these are the words of God. He spoke unto man. When man was created, something was installed in man. Something was put in man. God spoke. He put a technology in man. That man is purpose to prosper. He shall be successful in whatever he does. He says, bless you. He blesses man. He says, as for this creature called man, because everything was created after its own kind. It was created to produce and to reproduce after its own kind. He speaks unto man because man has been made according to the God kind. So you come from the kind that which is of God. And God spoke unto man. He said, I have created man in our own image. After our likeness. And then he gives man authority and power to have dominion. And the dominion is upon this earth. That whatever you do must prosper. Because that is the technology that man was created in. That was the fashion of man. He was fashioned as God. He was blessed with capacity, with understanding, and with divine wisdom. And I'm speaking to a region. I'm speaking to the people in Kwale. I'm speaking to the people in Vigurungani. I'm speaking to the people in Kenya. I'm speaking to the people in East Africa. I'm speaking to the African continent. That black does not mean that you are in darkness. Black shines in darkness. Because we have been created to manifest the fullness of his power. We have got the potential. We have got the ability. We have got the capacity. And you can do it and you can make it. Let no man tell you that it is, it is too late. You cannot do that. Let no man tell you. Let no man give you or bring limitations in your life. Do not be limited by the voices of man. The Bible says that Saul went against the purpose of God because he was afraid of the voices of man. He was afraid of their faces. But there cometh a man. God says, I have found a man after my own heart, David. And David, the moment anointing came upon David, David was there in the battlefield and he was battling against giants. And he looks at the giant 
and he says, I have an understanding of who I serve. When I was in the field, I brought down the bear. I brought down the, 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 the lions. I brought down the leopards. Any beast of the field that tried to devour the cattle and the livestock of my father, I brought them down with my bare hands. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall go down like the rest of them. I want somebody who can have the same faith. And I decree upon your family, the same manner that Christ said it is finished, I say the problems in your family are finished. Diseases and ailments and causes that are traveling through the bloodline, it is finished. Whatever opposition and accusations against you, it is finished. Whatever power and arrows of the enchanters, arrows of sorcerers that were sent against you, God is saying, it is finished. I reverse it back to the sender in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the book of Psalms, chapter 91 from verse 13, the Bible says, you shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample underfoot. Ah, my God. You shall trample. God is speaking of treading upon the lion. They are lions. They are people who have got faces of lions. God says, God says you shall tread upon them. The lion and the adder, that poisonous snake. That when you are bitten by an order, it lets, it takes less than 15 seconds for you to begin paralyzed. You, you, be, you become paralyzed because of the venom, because of the poison. There are lions and there are snakes and there are adders. God is saying, you shall tread. He's speaking about you. He says, you shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon. They are dragons. God has given you capacity. He has given you the anointing. And the carpenters have come so that they can tread on the lion. They can tread on the adder. They can tread on the dragon. And he says, you shall trample them. Trample underfoot. Trample. Step on the neck of your enemies. In Jesus' mighty name. He speaks in the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, from verse 11. That the house of the wicked shall be overthrown. But the tabernacle of the righteous or the upright shall flourish. It shall flourish. It shall flourish. God is granting you power over all spirits. Power to control ground spirits. Power to control uh, the realms of the aquatic. Power to control them. Power. Power. Every time we come uh, uh, across uh, uh, the celestial realms, we are manifesting as the God can. Because man, there's something that was put in man. Listen to me. The Bible says, among all the creatures that God created, it is only man that God breathed unto. Something came from the bowels of Elohim. Something came from the innermost chambers of his being. And it was pushed unto man. And God breathed unto man. He breathed. The breath was put. That breath that was in God was put in man. He breathed unto man. And man became a living nephesh. Man became a living being. He became an existing being because of the breath of God. I am now breathing the breath of deliverance upon your life. Let this breath of understanding and wisdom begin to enlighten you and begin to heal your bones, begin to heal your body. Whatever is happening to your body, whatever sickness, whatever disease, I command it to die and scatter in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever power, whatever altar, whatever word that was spoken over your life, tonight is a night of restoration. It's a night of blessing. It's a night of manifestation. My God, my God, my God. Let God be true and every man a liar. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. In Jesus' mighty name.